is Matthias Samuelson the most physical defender in this year's 2018 NHL draft? And how does his defensive abilities line up with other top prospects? Let's talk about it next. Welcome back to Hockey Scouting Report. So glad you're here. So glad you're watching. Today's video is going to be on Matthias Samuelson, an extremely physical defender, but of course his defensive game is very solid. And so if you're new to the channel, what I do here is we always have videos on scouting reports, comparison videos, as well as deep looks at prospect pools. The past three days we haven't had a video. I've been on the road for most of the weekend, but we're going to get right back into that content. We're actually going to have two videos today. So right after this one is posted, another very interesting video, actually a 2017 Two comparisons to 2017 draft picks will be released after this at some point today. So be interested in that. But if you're new to the channel, there's a lot of content here that you might enjoy. I go over different prospects in this year's draft, scouting reports on them. I also do comparison videos with them. And I also do deep looks at prospect pools. I'm open to suggestions. And this video was suggested about a week ago. So for the person who suggested this video, comment below specifically your thoughts on how the suggested video went. Was it what you were hoping for? And if anyone at all has any suggestions, comment below. Lastly, before we get into the content, of course, make sure to like and subscribe. If you like the video, make sure to like it and subscribe for more content. But also check out my Twitter. It's at HockeyLevine using the hashtag HockeyLevineTalk. And so on Twitter, you can contact me, of course, with suggestions. But I also post the links to every single video. So it's just a quicker way for you to get the notifications that way. But I'll also put polls there every once in a while about what kind of video I think should be coming next. I just put up a poll a couple of days ago. It just finished. And that was about what kind of video people want to see next. So let's get right down to the content. And if you enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe for more content. So Matias Samuelson, he's 18 years old. Now he turned 18 on March 14th. So what that means is... He's certainly one of the younger players in this draft. Pretty much the entire season, his draft eligible season, that first year of draft eligibility, he was 17. And so unlike someone like Brady Kachak, who was 18 for much of the year, or other older defenders that we've seen, or wingers, whoever it is, Matias Samuelson is certainly one of the younger players. Of course, uh, uh, Rasmus Dahlin is also fairly young in that sense as well. And so that does go into his development. He's certainly younger. He certainly can take more time to develop. We look at Adam Boquist. His defensive game isn't there, but he's very young. So when we talk about the aspects of Matias Samuelson's game that he's lacking, certainly being as young as he is, he only has time to develop. And so when we highlight his physical qualities, the first thing you want to mention is that he's 6'4", 216. So in a draft where size has not really been a statistic used for mock drafts, used from scouts, used for best availables, we see that two of the three or four best defenders in this draft are under 5'10", right about 5'10", 5'11". That's insane. And of course, we see that with Quinn Hughes, we see that with Adam Boquist, right around 5'10". And so it's insane to see how talented they are at such a small size. That's not something that we've seen in many drafts. Most drafts, uh, the guys with less height, of course, will fall. Last year, Kyler Yamamoto really came up as that early uh, guy to really get on the mark, a late first rounder for a lot of short guys, selected much earlier than people thought he would based on his size, but of course very talented nonetheless. This year is going to be even bigger for that. And so in a year with so many defenders, especially undersized ones, Matias Samuelson might really go off the board very quickly for two reasons. One, he has the size that really allows him to play physical more than other defenders who don't have the size, but also he has the pedigree. His father played in the NHL for many uh, seasons, and we'll look at that in a little bit, but his father was also a physical defender with even more size than him, I believe 6'7", and we'll talk about that. And so certainly he has the pedigree to be as good as his father as physical. And so Matias Samuelson, he's, he is Swedish and American. Of course, his dad was Swedish, but Matias was born in the United States, and so he's played in the U.S.'s program both internationally and nationally. And so when we look at his stats, he played in the U.S. DP program this year and the USHL. And so for the USHL, 23 games played, 4 goals, 10 assists, 14 points. Decently offensive, but that hasn't really been his main aspect. But then he also had 64 penalty minutes and a plus 16. So he really highlights the physicality. But through this physicality, he never makes bad plays. He's never going to cause the defensive game to break down. He's making good hits. He's laying very solid hits. But he's not putting in his team uh, in a bad position doing so. Also, plus 16 on the ice. 
if we compare these numbers to Bodie Wild, who of course expected to be drafted anywhere from 15 to 17, he is also a physical defender playing in this USHL USDP system. If we compare his numbers in that USHL year, for Bodie Wild, his stats, 25 games played, 3 goals, 13 assists, 16 points. So in just those USHL games, it's not a huge comparison. We will look at the USDP numbers. But in the USHL, very similar numbers overall, goals and assist-wise overall very similar. Bodie Wild, slightly more offensive, but very similar. But when we look at it in the physical sense, Bodie Wild has only 16 penalty minutes. Matias Simonson had 64. And so you can see the physicality difference is really there. Now, if you look at the USDP numbers, of course, the USDP, very talented program. It's the program that gets a lot of guys on the map. Of course, Austin Matthews got his name on the map that way. Jack Hughes has done it this year, of course, with uh, Joe Farabee and Oliver Wallstrom. Of course, Quinn Hughes did it last year. And so all these guys are getting their names on the map because of the USDP program. Matias Samuelson and Bodie Wild have been really the top defenders this year with, of course, Wallstrom, Hughes, and Farabee playing on the offensive side. So it's been a very talented system for them. And so when we look at Samuelson's USDP numbers, 58 games played, 11 goals, 20 assists, 31 points, 113 penalty minutes. So really highlighting the physicality, the penalty minutes. But of course, you can see there is some offensive game with those 11 goals, 31 points in the 51 games. Now, when we look at Bodie Wild's numbers, how do they line up? Of course, in the USDP this time, Bodie Wild, for him, he had a lot more offensive abilities, 61 games played, so slightly more games played, 12 goals, so only one more goal, basically the same amount of goals per game, but the assists are where it breaks down, 29 assists for Bodie Wild for 41 points, so 10 more points for Bodie Wild for three more games, but then when we look at the penalty minutes, only 65 for Bodie Wild. So Bodie Wild is offensive, but he's, of course he is defensive as well. He is 6'2", 196. So he doesn't have as much size, but he is physical. He can play defense. And a lot of people have Matias Samuelson going from anywhere from 25 to 35 in this draft. Bodie Wild 15 to 17, largely because Bodie Wild can play an all-around two-way game. He's decently offensive, he's decently defensive, and does bring some physicality. Matias Samuelson, his game is fantastic in the defensive zone, fantastic physicality, offense not so much. And so he hasn't been as much of an all-around two-way player the same way Bodie Wild has. But if anything, he's more elite in certain areas, physicality and defense. And so when we break it down even further, Bodie Wild is compared. I made the comparison of Bodie Wild to Nicholas Cronwall. But of course, I also did one to Dustin Bufflin. Now, Dustin Bufflin has more size, more height, more uh, weight on Bodie Wild. So it's a tough comparison. But Nicholas Cronwall, one of the best hitters in the NHL year after year, I compare that to Bodie Wild. And so we can see how physical Bodie Wild is. Bodie Wild is a better hitter. But that being said, Matias Samuelson knows how to use his size better to lay powerful checks. Yes, he can lay those open ice hits that Bodie Wild is known for, but he uses his size to be an agitator, but also to play with a very strong defensive game, making sure you can't get to the puck. And it's something Bodie Wild hasn't really highlighted in his game. When we look internationally, Matias Samuelson has also been highlighted internationally. And so he played the World Juniors under 18s for USA. He was their captain. So we can see there's a lot of leadership qualities with him as well. Seven games played, one goal, one assist, two points, six penalty minutes, and a plus two. Not a horrible showing. You'd like to see a little bit more offense, but you can see overall, just stat-wise, he is a productive player. Of course, physicality is highlighted once again. Now, in the fall, he's heading to Western Michigan University. He was committed to the University of Michigan, of course, where Quinn Hughes is playing as a freshman. Next year, he'll be a sophomore. But Matias Simonson did uh, decommit and then go to Western Michigan for the fall. And a lot of people are wondering why he picked that the University of Michigan, so much more of a hockey school, does have more development, better players, better system overall. But of course, Matias Simonson wants to be highlighted as the top defender. He can't compete with Quinn Hughes as that top defender or one of the top in the University of Michigan system. Going to Western Michigan, he should be highlighted more. And so long term, it could be better for his stat production. But does this mean he has to spend more time in the NCAA to develop? It's possible. Now, he did get named uh, the top three best players 
uh, for his uh, World Juniors when he was captain, top three best players for Team USA. He also won a silver medal. So he does have some experience, but we've talked about a lot of guys who have so many international experiences, he only has one. And so it hasn't been amazing for him. You look at Bodie Wild, he did also play in the World Juniors under 18. Seven games played, no no points at all. So less offensive showing, four penalty minutes and a minus one. Like I said, he's going to the University of Michigan in the fall. Now, if we look at Samuelson's numbers in the USHL last year, so a full year before this USDP that he was doing, 30 games played, five goals, five assists, 10 points. So if we compare that to his numbers in the USHL this year to see that growth, 23 games this year, four goals, 10 assists. So he did grow more offensively. And we have seen that year after year, Matias Samuelson has gotten better offensively. And so despite not having elite offense or even really top four productive offense, he, you can see that there's a development track that he's followed and we expect him to continue to follow that. There's no reason why he shouldn't. More ice time, he should be more productive offensively. Now, he did not get to play in the World Hockey Championships under 17. Bodie Wild did. So this comparison, it's interesting between the two, how they're getting similar amounts of games. Bodie Wild slightly has that edge, though, and that's why he's going to be drafted higher. Matias Samuelson, like I said, no World Hockey uh, Championship under 17. Bodie Wild did, and he was very much highlighted most points by any defender there. Five games played, two goals, four assists, uh, six points. Also two penalty minutes. So highly... Uh, thought of since then. Matias Samuelson really coming on because of his father. And of course, his father, uh, when we look at his father, Krells Samuelson, of course, a defender, 6'7, 231. So he has quite the amount of size over Matias Samuelson, who already has one of the best uh, size um, packages in this year's first round draft for defenders. His father played 813. NHL games, 47 goals, 138 assists, 186 points for 0.23 points per game. In the playoffs, pretty similar, 0.20 points per game, 123 uh, games in the playoffs, 4 goals, 20 assists, 24 points. So not very offensively productive, but certainly decent. But we also see he had 1,225 penalty minutes throughout his career. So certainly, this is someone who's going to get a penalty minute of the game, very possible. He plays a very similar game to his father. His father did win a Stanley Cup for the Penguins in 1991 and 1992 that season. He won a Stanley Cup, and he also made it to another Stanley Cup but lost. I believe it was 1986, 1987 with the Flyers. It definitely was with the Flyers against the Oilers, and I'm pretty sure it was 86 to 87, but they did lose uh, in the Cup. And so when we look at his father, well, he was drafted 119th overall by the Rangers, played two years with the Rangers, played quite a few years with the Flyers, went to the Penguin system for a few years, came back to the Flyers, finished his uh, career with Tampa for a season. So he's been really around the league overall. He's now a development coach for Philadelphia. And so if anyone's going to draft Matias Samuelson, Philadelphia does have a pick. Now it's an earlier one, but is it possible they draft knowing they need to have more physicality in their team, a very physical team historically, the Flyers, why not add another physical defender? And your father works there already as a development coach, very possible. And so what is the uh, skills that Matias Samuelson brings to his game? And then we'll talk projection and comparison and best fit. Well, his skills, he plays a very strong defensive game, which we've talked about, very strong physicality as well, which really furthers the defensive game largely because he has great vision from the back end, and so he's really able to see the play forming before it does. He also can lay very powerful hits, uses his size to his advantage. Not every player in this draft is. Evan Bouchard, for example, good size for a defender. He could use it physically, but he doesn't. He chooses to use it offensively, which works very well for him, but you could see him using his size more effectively defensively if he wanted to. Now, Matias Samuelson gives 100% every play. He skates fairly well despite his size, but it is something he needs to work on. His one-on-one -on -one game is very strong. You're not going to see him making mistakes one-on-one. -on -one. He also has a very developed two-way game, and we've talked about how developed it is defensively. Offensively, it needs to get there. That's something he needs to work on substantially, but with more ice time, he will get there. But it's really developed defensively because, like I said, great vision, but also great defensive hockey IQ. His defensive positioning is some of the best in this draft. And we've talked about in previous videos how important that is and how some players in this draft don't have it. And certainly a very strong player. His feet are always moving defensively. He's not going to make those mistakes. He's great in the one-on-one -on -one sense. His gap control is also very strong. And so a lot of great aspects for a defensive defender. 
He also is a leader. We've seen that he was a captain for the World Juniors under 18 for USA. So certainly a leader, someone who could be a true presence on a blue line, that's something that you want to see. His shot from the point is also fairly powerful. He doesn't use it as much as he should. He barely uses it at all. But when he does use it, his uh, odds of getting a goal substantially increase. He's very much a good goal scorer from the point when he's using his powerful shot. His projection is a top three big hitting big minute carrying defender of course a defensive defender and the stat projection is eight goals 20 assists 50 points or excuse me 50 penalty minutes so anywhere from 25 to 30 points is what we're looking at 50 to 100 penalty minutes is possible but like I said earlier he doesn't make bad plays when he's physical so I don't expect a ton of penalties he will rein it in as he has at the international tournament as he has in the playoffs and so I expect that now, he's going to certainly become more offensive with more ice time. Getting in the top three, it's very possible that he'll be playing with an offensive defender, especially pairing one with a defensive physical defender. So he could get more offensive and use his shot from the point more. So what is his comparison and his best fit? Well, his comparison is none other than Brent Seabrook. And so Brent Seabrook, 33 years old, Canadian, 6'3", 220. So he has that great size, very similar size. And he was the 14th overall selection by the Blackhawks in the 20, uh, 2003 draft. And so he has three Stanley Cups and also one Olympic gold for Canada. So he's been highly thought of as one of the best defenders in the league for many seasons. Now, he's not a top five defender, in my opinion. When we're naming top five defenders, of course, P.K. Subban, Eric Carlson, Brett Burns, Drew Doughty, Victor Hedman, these guys are getting mentions. Of course, you could even throw in uh, Ryan Suter, Duncan Keith. But Brent Seabrook is really the next guy that you want to mention. Shea Weber might get his name in there. Maybe a couple years ago he would. He's getting older. But Brent Seabrook will get his name mentioned after the most elite. So certainly a very talented defender nonetheless. He's also the assistant captain for the Blackhawks. He's been that for nine out of his 13 career years, including the past six, or excuse me, the past five. So we can see how much of a leader he is, similar to Matthias Samuelson. In his career, 1,004 games, 95 goals, 337 assists for .43 points per game. Slightly more offensive than what I think Matthias Samuelson will uh, end up being. When we look at uh, Seabrook's playoff numbers, 123 games played, 20 goals, 39 assists, 59 points, .48 points per game. So he is slightly more clutch in the playoffs. Matthias Samuelson has shown capabilities to be slightly clutch. When we look at Seabrook's uh, penalty minutes throughout his career 612 in the regular season 83 in the playoffs and he was uh, plus 116 for the regular season plus 8 in the playoffs so someone who is defensive someone who can be offensive from the point someone who can generate offense when he's playing with an offensive defender playing with Duncan Keith has done that for years for him but also very physical laying great hits one of the better hitting defenders in the NHL certainly a good defensive defender but someone who can log 30 to 35 points when we look at Brent Seabrook's goals throughout his career, every single year in goals, he's never been around more than 10 goals. When we look at it, 7 this year, before that, 3, 14, 8, 7, 8, but that 8 was with 47 games played, 9, 9, 4, 8, 9, 4, and then rookie year was 5. So we can see that he's never really been a major goal scorer, it's right about where I said Samuelson will be 8 goals. And then when we look at his career points each season, this year was 26. This year, 81 games played, 7 goals, 19 assists for 26 points, also 38 penalty minutes. When we break down the points that he's had every single season, he's had 26, then 39, 49, 31, 40, 20. That 20 was with the 47 games played. 34, 48, 30, 26, 32, 24, then as a rookie, 32. So right about 30 points is exactly what you're going to expect uh, Seabrook to be when he was in his prime, still can be. And someone like Matias Samuelson is exactly that. So the comparison is certainly there statistically, but also in the overall skills. Seabrook is very strong in the defensive game because of great defensive IQ and great vision from the back end, just what we talked about with Samuelson. Also, Seabrook can log huge minutes. He uses his size to his advantage as well as his strength. Very strong player and does use it to his advantage. He has strong skating for his size. He's a good passer overall, one of the better passers that we see for defenders. But also, Brent Seabrook has a very powerful shot from the point. So very similar to what I said with Samuelson, 
He also plays a shutdown game, but he could be more aggressive. He is physical, but he could add more agitation, more uh, aggressiveness to his game, but overall very similar to Samuelson. And so what is the best fit for Samuelson? Really two teams come to mind, but I only want to talk about one of them. And the two that come to mind are the St. Louis Blues, who I think need a physical defender. Of course, they do have some. Uh, Petrangelo isn't bad in that category, but I think they do need to add one. But I think the best fit is honestly the Blackhawks. And not usually is the best fit that I pick the same as the team that has the comparison for the player. Very rare that I do that. But I think it's actually a good fit just because the Blackhawks need another physical defender. Brent Seabrook's only getting older and their decor, their contracts are ending very soon. So let's talk about it very briefly. Of course, their decor, it is led by Duncan Keith, 2023 UFA. Brent Seabrook, 2024 UFA. So they're locked in for a while, but they are getting older. Seabrook, 33, and already on the decline statistically. After that, uh, Eric Gustafson, 2020 UFA. Jan Rutta, 2019 UFA. Jordan Osterley, 2019 UFA. And then Connor Murphy, 2022 UFA. So certainly a few guys, at least three, are going to be out in the next couple years. Now, they do have some young guns, but have any of them shown to be elite hitters? No, they've shown to be more offensive players. And so they have three of them. Blake Hillman, 2019 RFA. I've been following him a little bit. He was drafted a few years ago. He just finished his junior year at the University of Denver. 22 years old. He was the 173rd pick in the 2016 draft. 6'1", 187, so he has decent size. He came right to the NHL after that NCAA season, signed that contract, four games played with a goal. For Denver in that uh, third season for him, 41 games played. He had three goals, nine assists for 12 points, 52 penalty minutes, and a plus six. So he looks to be a nice bottom pairing kind of change of pace defender for the Blackhawks. They also have Gustav Forsling, 2019 RFA, as was Hillman, as is the next guy. So a lot of young guys, but potentially none of them are under contract in a year, depending on how they need to shift their money overall. And so Gustav Forsling, 21 years old, six foot 185. He was the 126 pick by the Canucks in the 2014 draft. This year, 41 games played for the Blackhawks, three goals, 10 assists, 13 points, eight penalty minutes. When we look at the next guy, Carl Dahlstrom, 2019 RFA, like I said, 23 years old, 6'4", 231. So nice size overall. Played in the AHL, 64 games played, 3 goals, 25 assists, 28 points. 22 penalty minutes and a plus 14. Did get some quick NHL work, 11 games played, 3 assists, 3 points. So some young guys to play with, but none of them look to be elite physical defenders by any means. Brent Seabrook's getting older, and that's the one they've really relied on for many years. Brought them three Stanley Cups. Of course, many players did, but he was one of the main facets for that. You want to add someone who can eventually replace him, and this is the perfect fit, Matias Samuelson. Of course, they also have some even younger prospects with Chad Chris, Boston University. Just finished his sophomore year, 36 games played, 7 goals, 20 assists, 27 points. Of course, the 45th pick in the 2016 draft. Also, they have Henry Yohiharu, 18 years old, 6'181". He was the 29th pick in the 2017 draft. He could actually be NHL ready. This year, major step forward in the uh, WHL, point per game, 63 games played, 12 goals, 59 assists for 71 points. So highly offensive for him. He was way below point per game last season before this one. Also 14 penalty minutes in the playoffs, 12 games played, 3 goals, 5 assists, 8 points. So it's been a good season for him, and the Blackhawks could see a lot of these guys get more NHL time next year. But aside from Yoki Haru, I don't see any of them being elite players. Maybe Chris can be a top four guy, but I think they really need to find who their top pairing is going to be five years down the road. Yoki Haru is that. Five years down the road, Keith and Seabrook probably aren't going to be as productive. They won't be top pairing guys, or if they are, there's probably better. They probably shouldn't be top pairing guys by then. I think Yoki Haru, Matias Samuelson would be a great pairing down the middle. Once again, it adds the offensive and physicality punched in together, much like Duncan Keith and Brent Seabrook have been for years and years. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this content, of course, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe for more content. Like I said, there will be another video coming out just in a couple hours, and that's a 2017 draft comparison between two very highly drafted prospects. So be interesting to see what your thoughts are on that video. Make sure to check it out. It should be one of the most interesting videos I've created on this channel, at least I hope so. 
and uh, make sure to comment below your thoughts on this video. Do you think Matias Samuelson is as much of a physical and defensive defender as I think he is? Is he going to revolutionize uh, the defense and the physicality in the NHL? Is he going to be someone that no one wants to play against? Comment your thoughts below. And of course, I'll see you guys in the comment section and in the next video.